Coming up on World's Greenest Homes. On the Florida coast, Mediterranean-style villas built to withstand a hurricane. The structure is completely concrete block. The windows and doors are hurricane resistant, so we're pretty safe here. And up in Canada, in British Columbia, green meets glam in this energy-saving lakefront home. We felt that it was important to be able to see the whole 180-degree view, so we decided to live on the second floor. I'm Emmanuel Beliveau. Come with me on World's Greenest Homes and see the most extraordinary homes on the planet. Homes that are gorgeous, cool, and green. This is the Florida Panhandle. Its sunshine and sandy beaches make it a vacation hotspot. But with the best of weather comes the worst of weather. Hurricanes strike this balmy coastline about six times a year. But it doesn't stop people wanting to live here. This area has a look and feel of a quiet Mediterranean village. But in fact, it's not. It's Florida. I'm at Alice Beach, just 30 minutes up the coast from Panama City. In a place where buildings have to withstand some of the worst weather in the U.S., one community decided to build eco-friendly homes they say are hurricane-proof and strong enough to last 500 years. And less construction means less harm to the environment. Meet two of the architects who helped to design Alice Beach, Eric Voigt and Marianne Curry Voigt. They live here with their daughters three-year-old Maya and seven-year-old Ava. Through the front doors is the courtyard, around which the rest of the house is built. The main floor is an open concept living space, with the kitchen just beyond the dining room. Off the living room is the family room. Up on the next level is the master bedroom with a master bath. And just down the hall is the kids' room. How you doing? Hi, I'm Marianne. Emmanuel, pleased to meet you. Hi, Eric. Eric's a pleasure. Welcome to our house at Alice Beach. Thank you very much. This area is just gorgeous. Well, thank you. Thank Come you. on in. Great. This is where we spend most of our time when we're in the house. Well, I can see why. It's beautiful. We have a lot of windows and doors open to the south, so we get wonderful light that comes in. We get great sunlight coming in, but it's not direct sunlight. It's actually indirect sunlight, so you don't get all the heat as well. Exactly. And you don't often see beams like this in Florida. I love what you've done with the ceilings. They're solid beams, they're cedar and they're stained ebony, but we actually have a truss floor system there to run all of the guts of the house. A truss is a supporting structure or framework of beams, girders or rods, commonly of steel or wood. We do have high ceilings, which gives you great ventilation. It's about 11 feet. I love the furniture, very eclectic pieces you have here. Thank you. We're happy to say that we've recycled a lot of this through internet online auction sites. Oh, really? Yeah, and we've not had any unpleasant surprises so far. Yeah. Did you have to reupholster stuff? or A couple of things, but, okay. but we're fine doing that. I love this floor. What species of wood is this? This is a walnut floor uh -huh. that actually has the, uh, the Florida Stewardship Council stamp, so we try to avoid all um, illegally harvested woods. So this is responsibly harvested wood, this is great. Slightly thicker boards. Yeah, I love it, it's a wide plank, so it's great character. Thank you, we love it as well. And through this beautiful arch where we have the kitchen, what's the finish on the walls? This is actually a steel troweled plaster finish. It's a veneer coat of plaster, and um, actually none of the walls, with the exception of the kitchen, none of our walls in our house are painted. This is an right. integrity colored applied plaster. So the color's in the pigment? Correct. And it is really easy maintenance. Right. Apart from the fact that it's very luminous and it reflects light in a beautiful way, if you get a stain or a spot, you can just sand it down and that's it. So when we have and our girls so who, you know, make a little mark, it's just very easy to take care of. Really? Mm -hmm. so you don't have to repaint it and... That's incredible. So if your girl's making a mess of it, you can just sand it off. You just you rub just it rub and it, it comes off. it and that's off. it. In the kitchen, it's not just the low VOC paint, that's low volatile organic compound, that goes the Enviro Mile. Lots of natural light slashes the need for artificial. And it's packed with Energy Star appliances, such as this hybrid gas and electric stove. 
I notice your concrete has some color over here. That is fly ash. It's a byproduct of coal-fired power plants, and we use it as filler for our concrete. Right, so you're saving it from going to landfill. So Correct, and then wonderful. it gives the, the concrete a little bit of the yellow color. Yeah, it gives, some, gives it some dimension, some depth to it. Correct. Something interesting. Just beyond the main living room is another multifunctional space. This is a nice bright room. What happens in here? This room serves as a double function, as a family room and a guest bedroom. We have people staying in from, from out of town. This room has more recycled furniture bought online and its own bathroom. So should we go on upstairs? Yeah, let's check it out, for sure. On up to the second floor, and Eric's artistic talents are right in front of you. Wow, what a beautiful painting. That was actually a project that Eric had as a student. The challenge was to draw one detail full scale, true to size, and he chose to do a door that we had noticed in Rome that was four feet wide by 11 feet tall, and he, over a period of uh, a number of months, uh, drew it to incredibly meticulous detail. And uh, I fell in love with that drawing the minute I saw it, and I've always actually wanted to hang it in a house that we had. Yeah, it would take some pretty tall ceilings to hang a painting like that. Well, exactly, it? and this is why it was fortuitous that we were able to actually get this house and, and hang it here. Now, let me show you the master bedroom. Okay. Oh. It's great, more green. Yes, we knew you guys were coming. <laughs> the light-filled master bedroom has an island feel and features a balcony. Wow, look at that view. The street plan is designed so that the ocean breezes flow through, sort of nature's own air conditioning. Having the, these breezes come in just contributes so much to the cross ventilation of the homes. It does two things, it moves the hot air through and then allows the cooler air to linger. And they've borrowed a classic bit of Mediterranean design. You see we have white, white masonry walls and white roofs and what that does is it reflects the heat, which is obviously very important in, in this particular type of climate and, and they're about, I think, 40 degrees cooler than other more traditional roofs. But the rather unusual insulation of these homes is a bit more high tech. Another interesting feature we use in throughout all of our walls, we use soy-based insulation. And what it does is that it, it expands and fills in every gap and it greatly reduces the chance of moisture buildup. Together, these eco-choices maximize the perks of Mother Nature, but the weather is not always this kind. We've seen Eric and Marianne's main floor living space, the family room, and the master bedroom. Next room to explore, the master bathroom. One of the more uh, wasteful household expenses is uh, heating hot water. And so um, what Marianne and I decided to do is install a uh, sort of remote sensors in all of the bathrooms and in the hallways. And what these do is tell the uh, hot water heater when people are in the house and moving around and to come on and, and start the hot water. People think sometimes it takes too long to come on, but it's actually, ah, actually comes on quite quickly. And that helps to cut their energy bills by 70%. Down the hall is Maya and Ava's room and more of the vintage furniture that Eric and Marianne collect. The kids even have their own bathroom, complete with a hot water sensor, just like mom and dad. But the ultimate chill out zone has to be outside. And look at this. This is something else. Thank you. So it's beautiful. It's That's the right. first thing you get to see when you walk into your house. That's right. It's our entry hole. Not only is this courtyard a 900 square foot family oasis, like the rest of Alice Beach, it's designed to maximize the natural ventilation from the ocean breezes. The house is open on, on three sides, and so air is drawn in through these hallways, and so our courtyards stay very cool and pleasant. And they stay cool like this all year long? They yeah. do. Like even the summertime, does it, is, is it this cool? It's very, it is actually very, yeah. Yeah, it's... the temperature's up, but the breeze keeps coming through. And yeah. we made sure in this house that we have perforated panels in the gates as well as in the loggia. That's for what? Uh, loggia, which is a fancy Italian word. <laughs> for what? For what? For, a, I guess what we call in America a porch, but okay. it's really an enclosed outdoor room. Beside the loggia is a shady pergola made of bamboo and covered with local plants that thrive in this hot climate and salty air. What do you have growing for vines? Uh, these are called a cross vine, and they're a native to this area and require very little water, and they put out beautiful pink and orange flowers. Oh, good. So a lot more color to come. A lot oh, yeah. more color to come. Well, it's beautiful. I love it. And what do you have here on the ground? We wanted a green ground cover that wouldn't 
have to have pesticides or a lot of water, and so we seed it with dichondro, which does not require as much maintenance. And you won't find any chemicals in the pool. And what kind of pool is this? This pool is chlorinated with salt water generators, so we avoid harsh chemicals and it's a little bit less cost. We use it a lot, our girls use it a lot. They've learned to swim in this pool, and so it's been wonderful for us. It's all very relaxing, but what if Mother Nature decides to turn? What happens if there's a hurricane? Well, um, the house is built to fortified standards. The structure is completely concrete block, which is filled with concrete and the windows and doors are hurricane resistant, wind resistant, so we're pretty safe here. Alice Beach is a grouping of houses all built together. Did you, did you do that because of strength in numbers? Uh, indeed there is. Um, it, since this house is bordered by uh, a house to the south and a house to the north, we really have only two sides that are exposed, so it helps protect all of them. It's sort of a, a, a communal feature against the uh, forces of nature. You're gonna fall? Oh no! Another communal feature of Alice Beach is the kids' playground, but it's not your typical monkey bars and swings. As you might expect, it's the greenest play area you've ever seen. This playhouse was designed by Eric and I and was designed for a local charity and then purchased by a town founder for the community at large to enjoy. So the whole dog, which is called Bow Wow House, is made of reclaimed or resalvaged wood that, from our construction site. We have a little panel here. This is a little photovoltaic solar panel that lights up a light that is inside the belly of the dog, which is painted red. Low voc paint as well. And then the floor is a rubberized, um, recycled tires and, and rubber. The little dog bone is a table that's also made of reclaimed wood. And then these are just the stairs that are going up and we have these little dog paws that climb up that kind of tell the kids which, which directions to go in. It's a fun little house that the local community's been enjoying and, and that's, been, that's been really fun for us and our girls certainly have loved it. Well, what we've really tried to do here is create something that has beauty and has character. That's what creates sustainability and durability because people will care for it over time and, and really make it their own. Beautiful, wonderful place. Oh, well, thank you very much, man. Thank you again. Thank you so Take much, Penny. It was delightful to meet Bye, you. Bye, sweetheart. The weather on the Gulf Coast provides one of the biggest construction challenges there is. But Eric and Marianne are part of a team of architects who wanted to design homes that were both green and would stay standing for generations to come. Our next house is nestled on one of Canada's most scenic lakefronts. So it's no wonder the homeowners wanted to live right on the beach. But they don't exactly live in a beach hut. This house combines lakeside luxury with a bounty of eco-friendly elements. We're in Summerlin on Lake Okanagan in British Columbia. With its scenic shoreline and sprawling mountains, the area has been called an all-season playground. The first thing that strikes you about this home is its Asian-inspired geometric design, not its green features. But it's received a dozen awards for everything from its eco-friendly construction to energy saving. Vicky and Eric Garretts live here, along with Cinnamon and Jazzy. Vicky designs houses and Eric builds them. The couple chose the second level of their 6,300 square foot home for their main living space. Inside the entrance lobby, there's a water feature. And right ahead, the main entertainment space. Upstairs, tucked behind the stairwell, is the dining room. And an enormous open concept kitchen and living room. A bridge connects the house to the guest suite. Back in the main house, there's a master bedroom and bathroom. The bedroom opens onto the deck, which extends all the way back to the kitchen. Hi guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Vicky. Welcome to our house. Come on in. Being that we live on the lake shore, it was really nice to have a little bit of water as you come to the house, so you get the feeling that this is what's yet to come on the other side. It introduces about the correct amount of moisture into the house. 
and that means the water feature doubles as a natural humidifier. In the Okanagan, it's a very arid area. We find when the feature's not running, the home does get quite dry inside. It simply works on a delivery system down below here. Under these rocks, there's just a steel grill, which gives way to a, a reservoir area under there with an automatic filler, because we do have to compensate for evaporation. The water has a reservoir below. It simply has a very small pump. It pumps it up the inside of this column and puts it out through a delivery system at the top, lets it run back down, and it's just a self-contained, self-circulating system. Down a short hallway is the entertainment area. With its bar, pool table, and card table, it makes a perfect party spot. And uh, over here, we've installed a keg fridge so we can put beer on tap. Given their beach lifestyle, they've gone for a porcelain tile floor, but off-gassing from sealants has been kept to a minimum. There's a lot of things that go underneath the tile. There's glues and then we have grouts, everything else that's involved. And so everything that we used was considered to be an environmentally friendly choice. And then we have the other half of the open space here, which in an ideal world is where we try and stay fit, which doesn't always happen. <laughs> The frames that, that you'll see around all the windows and doors in the home has an additional six inches in width. And the reason for that, of course, is the insulated concrete forms that we use for constructing this house. It outperforms a conventional wall somewhere around three to three and a half times. The insulated concrete forms, or ICF, are foam blocks filled with reinforced concrete. It keeps the house airtight, helping to cut their energy bills. Here in the Okanagan, we have a very large temperature spread, so heating and cooling become an issue all year round from an uh, energy conservation point of view. Now that we've seen the lower level, let's head upstairs. Instead of having a railing, we've created ledges and then put this on top of it. And Eric made it. Behind you, you can see the pattern that goes up the wall, which is basically just a bigger version of this. This pattern is also repeated outside on some of the fencing at the front and in the little courtyard area. Um, this is also an elevator. An elevator shaft could really be a, not very attractive, so I think as you come up around here, it creates good interest for what's there. Okay, this is the main floor of the house. We felt that it was important to be able to see the whole 180 degree view. So we decided to live on the second floor. If we're relaxing, this is where we are. One of the first things people comment in, in the winter, if they take their shoes off, is, oh, this feels so nice on my feet. The home uses energy efficient radiant heat piped through the concrete floors. Radiant heat, but it's not a fast reacting system. And so consequently, if we end up leaving the doors open for a while and there's a bit of a chill in the house, we can just put the fireplace on and we can alter the temperature within five or 10 minutes. It's always a greener choice to reuse old furniture. Vicky decorated the home with old family treasures, like this piano and old radio. It's all very comfortable here because you can mingle in small groups around the two different islands and out in the living room. This island is what I call the baking area, and I tend to do all my baking in here. Over here, this is where cooking would happen. So we have the sink, the stove, two ovens. So if we want a small oven and we're just heating something, we can do that here. It was very important too that I had sitting everywhere on the islands. I wanted to be able to, to work and talk to other people. So there's a raised bar here, and on the other island, we have two chairs as well. So no matter what you're doing in this kitchen, you can still do it and be able to make cooking or baking part of a social activity. On this area next to the sink, I have a recycle area. <laughs> if the dog would move. <laughs> one of the best things of living here is the view. So by all means, this is probably one of the places that we like the most. But the coolest feature on this level is the bridge that links the main living space with the guest suite. Along with being a design feature, the angled walls meant they could pack in even more insulation. That all helps to cut their energy bills in half. So here we are in the guest suite. And this is the guest suite bathroom. 
Most people, they think that cork is not a good choice for a bathroom, but it really is. This is waterproof and it's really a very soft and comfortable floor to get out on. It also has uh, in-floor heat here, so we're able to keep the floors nice and warm for company. Anyone can have non-toxic floors by using cork. Cork comes from the bark of a tree and is harvested without harming the tree or its habitat. Cork floors are made from waste from the bottle stopper industry. The waste is formed into sheets using only small amounts of adhesive. A floor that can last over 50 years is definitely a responsible choice. Back across the bridge, next to the living room, is the master bedroom. This is a place that I think you can make very different in a house because it's your own personal space. One of the changes that we made here was we decided to put carpet here. We tend to like to sleep in a very cool room, so the radiant on this floor, this particular zone, is seldom on. The home's climate control system is divided into 15 zones, allowing the couple to conserve energy by adjusting the heating room by room. We just leave the one on in the ensuite so that those floors stay warm. The residual heat from that is ample for us to keep this room warm enough in the winter. This is a very low pile. It doesn't show any marks or anything. And even better, it is 100% recyclable. Sliding doors separate the bedroom from the ensuite bathroom. One of the things that we've done is eliminated all the individual bathroom fans in the house and replaced them with a central uh, ventilation system called an HRV which is basically a heat recovery ventilator system. So what it does is it concentrates uh, vent outlets as this one is up in the ceiling here. When we kick it into high speed like this, the little port opens up to enable more air to get out and also turns the fan onto that high speed. It's a way of um, uh, exiting or exhausting the air in the home as well as having the ability to bring in fresh, filtered, cleaned air to replace the outgoing air. And the, the element of uh, heat recovery, which is what this unit's capable of, is it actually uses the outgoing air to preheat the incoming air to a, to, to a efficiency rating of 70%. Typically, when you exhaust air out of a conventional home, that air has been heated or cooled and now it's lost. Once it's cleaned, it's redistributed through the forced air system and, uh, and distributed through the entire house. So it's, a, it's an excellent way of keeping the home balanced and comfortable and keeps the air clean. So here we are out of the master bedroom, back out onto our deck. We can get all the way around to the kitchen or we can just admire the view. A friend of ours came up with the concept of cutting this entire semicircle out of here still offering plenty of room on the deck for gatherings, but it lets the light come right through and light the basement without impacting it. The exterior slate takes up two stories on this wall, so it was important to Vicky to get the pattern just right. We actually had to spread all the pallets out, <laughs> one dozen tile at a time, and face them all out over the garage floor until Vicky had kind of figured out the shades of gray, the colors that were available and uh, just about drove our tire layer nuts. We chose to use twin seal glass with low emissity coating and the argon gas fill, all for energy efficiency and once again for comfort because the low emissity actually blocks out the ultraviolet light to a very high percentage. So it retains uh, furniture colors and stuff like that. Down a level, there's a courtyard garden. We've got water features out here that carry on the theme of outdoor living and, and the lake. We can walk out to the lawn and hopefully if it's a nice day, get out on the boat and get some relaxing time. This home shows, with a little ingenuity, it's possible to go green and save energy, but also to design something that really stands out from the crowd.